Hi everyone, okay, so this is my next video and this is going to be comparing um, how a child is presented in an easy passage and you'd have the option of choosing another poem but for me it makes the most sense to compare, to compare it to my nine-year-old self so that's what we're going to do today, okay? So I guess the first thing to do when you're thinking about comparing poems is, sounds obvious, but step, step one is just think. Think and look. The question is childhood. The question is not, write everything you can about the poem in Easy Passage. When I took you through that poem, I talked a lot about it being um, a metaphor for childhood, transitioning to adolescence and then to adulthood. But this question is only asking us about childhood. So we only need to think about the poem from that point of view. And that's where some of you are going wrong in your essays. You're writing everything you know about the poem, not being selective enough, not being precise enough. This is just about childhood, nothing else, okay? So you want to stop, look back at the poem, and when you read the poem, think, right, what is this saying about childhood? How is childhood being presented? What different ways is childhood being presented? What do I think the writer was trying to say about childhood? Ignore everything else and just look at it afresh and look at it from the point of view about childhood, okay? Now, if you do that, and when I did that, these are the things that I sort of came up with, okay? So if you want to pause now and go and look and do the work yourself and then come back, that's great. Otherwise, I'm going to keep going. So firstly, I would say that if we just think about the poem in its literal meaning, so remember I talked about how it could be um, interpreted literally or metaphorically. So literally, in this poem, An Easy Passage, there is a 13-year-old girl who is climbing through a window, as the picture sort of suggests there, to get into her house, it suggests, because she hasn't got a key, she's locked out, she's with her friend, and presumably she wants to get inside and kind of continue the day with her friend. So if we just think about it literally, and not the metaphor about transitioning from childhood to adulthood, because that isn't what this question is about, then we just want to think about how that image of childhood is presented to us. She is, when she climbs through that window, bold, daring, risky. Um, she is doing everything she can to be reunited again with her friend or be able to carry on her day with her friend. So that's the image of childhood. And you think about maybe the words um, that the writer uses throughout the poem when she describes those two young girls and what then is she saying about childhood, okay? So I would say, the first thing that comes to my mind then, given that literal um, translation, is how important friendship is, okay? This girl is willing to do anything to carry on her day with her friend. Friendship is really, really important. So that's one way childhood is being presented to us. The importance of friendship is being stressed to us. Um, and as I said, the other thing is that it's about being daring, doing um, things that are risky or dangerous. She is ultimately climbing up into a window, uh, going through a window to get back into the house. So quite risky behaviour perhaps, and, and she maybe feels invincible and fearless. So another idea about childhood here is that when you are a child, you are fearless, you are invincible. If we look then at the evidence, so that's you know the next step, step one, I've had to think about it, right? What do I think the poem is saying about childhood? I think it's saying these things. Here's my evidence. This is what I found when I looked at the poem. This is, these are the lines, these are the words I'd pick out. And you notice now, when I go through the annotations, these are different annotations to what they were when we looked at the poem the first time. Because I said, we looked at the poem the first time, we were looking very much about this poem being a metaphor about the transition from childhood to adulthood. But this exam question is just about childhood. So, we've got the idea again that this girl in the poem all she's thinking about, she must keep her mind on her friend. That is her focus. You've got the imperative verb must. It's vitally, vitally important to her that she focuses on her friend who is waiting for her to get inside so presumably they can carry on their wonderful day. Um, the friend who she is half in love with. So obviously the use of the word love here is showing us how important this friendship is. This girl is, is almost in love with her friend. It's, it's so important to her, this, this friendship. Um, and her friend is waiting for her. So I guess that friendship is also reciprocated. You get the sense of the girl 
waiting for a friend to break in, to open the door so they can continue their day. They are reliant on each other, they are dependent on each other. So perhaps another way that childhood is presented to us is the idea that, um, that these, these children, these girls, they need each other and, and friendship is really, really important to them. That idea is continued because we've got the repetition of keep her mind and that imperative verb must, so as I said, that shows how important it is. The young girl's focus is just on her friend, on helping her friend, on allowing her friend into the house so they can continue their day. And also, to add, again, the importance of the friend, we've got the enjambed lines, okay? The use of enjambement, which means that the on her becomes the focus because the line is dropped down. Keep her mind on her. So the her, the friend, is incredibly important. So this idea of the presentation of childhood, childhood friendships being really, really important. But there are some other ideas as well that you can look at in these lines, not just the importance of friendship, but that second idea about being daring, being brave, being bold, being fearless. We've got how flimsy the lever is of that open window, and that contrasts perhaps with her strong will. She's determined, she, she's got a lot of strength, but this window is, is flimsy in comparison to her. So again, this presentation of childhood, of children being strong-willed, being determined, how they overcome barriers. You know, the, the window is, is a physical obstacle, but they're not gonna let that uh, stop her or restrict her. She's gonna break those boundaries, break through those barriers. Um, and also how easy it is as well, in a moment. So the presentation of childhood, they feel invincible, they feel powerful, they, they feel fearless, they can achieve anything, they can overcome obstacles, and with ease, because it'll only take a moment to get inside this house. Um, also, the extent to which they put all their efforts and energy into it, the girl is described as you know, reaching, leaning, the, these, these physical verbs, how she's giving her all, she's putting everything into this. And remember, this is all linked to the idea of her wanting to open up the door and let her friend in. So all of her energies is focused on that friendship and on continuing their day and their enjoyment in that day. So the whole of, the whole, thanks to the whole of her body, everything's being put into this. Okay, so we get those ideas and those presentations of childhood uh, in this poem. But different to that as well, it's not just one presentation of childhood. You'll remember that there's that moment in the poem where um, we have a séjour and um, we get this moment of reflection where this third person narrator seems to become even more detached and seems to stand, step back from the narrative and stops telling us about this um, girl breaking into the house and starts to, to reflect on the wider situation of, of girls and women in society. So we get this moment where what can she know of the way the world admits us less and less the more we grow. So we get just for a moment that contrast most of this poem is about how wonderful childhood is, how full of energy, full of life it is. Um, the idea being that these girls have their whole lives ahead of them. But we have this moment where we get this idea that probably as a woman, you may have some restrictions placed on you. Um, and these girls, they're oblivious to it. So another way childhood is presented here is the idea that when you're a child, you are oblivious to the restrictions or the limitations or the difficulties that you may face as you get older. So that's a different representation of childhood that's in this poem. So already we've had kind of three, friendship, being daring, and now being oblivious to what lies ahead. After that moment of um, reflection and introspection, it jumps straight back into the narrative. So remember, it's just a, just a fleeting moment, but at that clear shift, that clear change in tone created by that sejura and that question, and then back into that present moment. Remember, I said the poet uses the present tense now to bring us back to that narrative. And for now, in this moment, both girls seem lit. Remember, we've got that semantic field of light imagery, the lit, the gold, later on the silver and the shimmering. So all of those things suggesting that childhood is this wonderful time, this special time, this valuable time. Um, and remember to, to stress that even further, that childhood is contrasted against 
the grey drab adult life, if you remember. Okay, so this is just going back some of over some of the slides that we looked at last time and taking the idea further. Those children, those two girls, are contrasted against this secretary who is leading this kind of unfulfilled life. She's got these dreams of evening classes and, and trips of the lifetime, but she's she's not doing them. So we get the contrast between those girls, lit gold, against the drab, grey, unfulfilled adult life. So again, just going back over those slides from last time, so you can look back at those yourself. And remember then the poem finishing, just still with this idea of, of children and childhood being this glorious, special, valuable time. That semantic field of light imagery, as I said a moment ago, continues here with the silver, with the shimmering. Um, and remember the secretary is gazing at these girls, so that use of the verb gaze, she's admiring them, she's reflecting on perhaps when she was a child, looking back at that and thinking, wow, what a wonderful time. Um, but I guess just one more thing as well in terms of the representative childhood here. So we've had friendship, we've had daring, we've had oblivious to what's to come, but we've had it special. We've also got that it's fleeting. We've got this, this use of the adverb briefly, okay? Now remember this is now where the metaphor comes into play, those girls or this girl goes through the window into childhood. Um, and so the idea that that childhood is brief and that it's temporary and it doesn't last forever, which possibly adds to how special and valuable it is, okay? So all in all, if you're looking at an easy passage, um, I would say there's kind of five key ideas about how childhood is, pre is presented. So the importance of friendship is one, and you've got a range of quotations that you can analyze. Young people are brave and fearless. And again, you've got the quotations to do with her going through the window to support that. Then you've got that idea of being ignorant to the limitations that could be put on you as you get older. Then you've got the idea though of it being a special time with all that semantic um, field of light imagery contrasted with that secretary. And then finally, you've got the idea that it is over too soon, okay? so five different ideas about how a child is presented. And again, remember exam conditions, you wouldn't necessarily need to talk about all five of them. Um, you might look at that five and then think, okay, I'm just gonna pick these three. These three are the ones that I really want, want, want to write about. So there's some decisions to make there. But obviously factoring in your decisions is you don't just write about one poem for the exam, you have to compare it to another. So it's worth kind of pausing and thinking about and looking at the other poem and then making those decisions. So as I said, this video is focusing specifically on comparing it to, to my nine-year-old self. So step two, essentially is kind of run through that process again. It's thinking, right, in that second poem to my nine-year-old self, how is childhood presented there? Um, what different representations of childhood do we get? What do I think the writer is saying about childhood? And now, because we're comparing what's similar or different to an easy passage, okay? So again, what would be good now is to kind of pause and go away and look at the poem and do that thinking for yourself. But if you're not going to do that, then I'm going to take you through um, just the key ideas. Okay, now I'm not going to go into this one in as much detail because I want you to have some independence here. But um, if we just kind of put up that plan that we had a moment ago. So here's our five different representations of childhood in an easy pass passage. And then all I've done is I've looked at to my nine-year-old self and I thought, right, is that representation there? So I think when you look back at to my nine-year-old self, one of the things that probably stands out in terms of how childhood is presented is that we have that young girl, the nine-year-old, who is full of life, full of adventure. It talks about her um, rather running than walking, rather climbing and leaping. Um, it talks about them swinging uh, on a rope swing, all the different things, the summer ambition, all the different things that they did as a child. So that the presentation, the key presentation of that poem of childhood is that it is a time of, uh, for joy, for being full of energy. Um, and there are some similarities there, aren't there, between an easy passage 
we have that semantic field of light imagery. We have the idea that these girls have their whole life ahead of them, that um, you know they're enjoying life, that, that things are good. So we've got that. Um, so yeah, if I start with that idea then, the idea that in both poems, childhood seems to be a special time, a time full of freedom and fulfillment. You've got in To My Nine-Year-Old Self, you've got the quotation about the summer of ambition, and it's got the list of all the different things that the nine-year-old did in that summer. So you could explore that. Um, but you've also, if you think about this as being um, two contrasting ideas, contrasting the energy and vitality of childhood with the monotony of adulthood, then into my nine-year-old self, you've also got that dual perspective. You remember, you've got the, the grown-up narrator looking back at themselves when they were nine years old, and they're now talking about the body that they've spoiled. So there is a sense that, you know, when your childhood goes and you become an adult, it's not as fulfilling, it's not as um, full of joy as it was when you were a child. Um, you've also got, I suppose, moments into my, to my nine-year-old self, moments of reflection. Like you had the one moment in an easy passage. You've got it um, a bit more frequently, I would say, in to my nine-year-old self, where the older speaker kind of interjects um, and, and interweaves her narrative with the narrative of the nine-year-old. Um, I won't keep you then. So the older narrator understands the importance of childhood, of it being a special time. She doesn't want to keep the nine-year-old too long. She wants the nine-year-old to go off and, and do all those wonderful things and talks about it's time to pick rose hips for tuppence a pound. So she doesn't want to take up the young um, character's time. And you remember they got the anaphora of time on those lines, emphasizing how important time is. And that goes back to the idea perhaps of childhood being um, a fleeting time, over too quickly, it's temporary. So there's some ideas that you can analyse there. We talked about in an easy passage that the presentation of childhood as being young and brave and fearless, and we have that very, very strongly in the poem To My Nine-Year-Old Self. So I said, you know, first stanza, it talks about all those things that nine-year-old wants to do, uh, rather run than walk, rather climb than run, rather leap from a height than anything. So the sense of them being bold and fearless and brave really, really comes across. But remember, in To My Know Yourself, that is immediately contrasted with the line, um, I have spoiled this body we once shared. So you, you get more quickly, I would say in that poem, the idea that the wonder of childhood doesn't always last and the limitations of adulthood um, come across much sooner in that poem than they did in um, an easy passage where it came much later. Um, again, this idea of being ignorant, the limitations that lie ahead that we had in an easy passage with the um, idea of the world admitting the girls less and less as they get older. Again, we have exactly the same sentiment in To My Nine-Year-Old Self where the older speaker says, um, God knows I have fears enough for us both. So obviously the older speaker knows that the, the life ahead of that nine-year-old girl, the journey that's in front of her is not always going to be perfect. It's not always going to be wonderful. Um, so we have that moment of reflection. But again, going back to this idea of not wanting to spoil the young child's day, you know, I shan't cloud your morning. And you had that, that imagery there as well. Okay, so there's certainly um, lots of the ideas that you can compare. Maybe not friendship. Friendship doesn't really come across in both poems, so you might decide actually then I'm not going to make that point. But the other ones are definitely in there. So that's one way in which you can compare the poems. Obviously, there are other ways to do it too. Um, some of you like to compare stylistically. So you think about, okay, actually, in both poems, there is enjambement, and you talk about those. In both poems, there are there is seishura or questions, and you talk about those. Um, so you can you can in both poems there is imagery, and you break it down that way. So there are there are different ways to compare these poems, but but essentially the most important thing is to stop and think. The question is childhood. 
how is childhood being presented here? So just focus on the poems and what they are saying to us about childhood. And, and remember, link it all to the writer's big message. And I would say the big message for the writers in both these poems is how precious childhood is, how wonderful childhood is, but also perhaps how it's fleeting, how it's temporary and how it, will, it won't last or get taken away. OK, so um, that video hopefully helps you kind of prepare to write an essay comparing childhood in both of these poems. Um, that is something I'll be asking you to do very, very soon. So this is something you can go back to and look at. OK, all right. Hopefully it helps.